All right, so we just covered blunt trauma to the chest. Now let's look at penetrating trauma to the chest. So one day you're minding your own business, just swimming in the ocean, and you run into Neptune, god of the sea. And accidentally you say, hey, what's up, Poseidon? Which, of course, pisses Neptune off because he does not like being mistaken for uh, Poseidon. So he stabs you with his trident in the chest. Things are not looking good for you. So lesson number one, never piss off a Greek or Roman god. Lesson number two, what do we do with penetrating chest trauma? So as we remember from the previous lesson, we had subdivided the chest into two different areas, the chest and the anterior box, where the chest was the, this entire area, and we were worried mostly about the lungs, and the anterior box was delineated by that sternal notch, the line between the nipples and the costal margins, and inside this box we're mainly worried about the heart. But we know that other organs live in here, like the aorta, and actually part of the trachea, and the esophagus do as well, so those need to be taken into consideration. So penetrating trauma really comes in two kinds, uh, gunshot wounds and stab wounds. And obviously this injury, a trident blow to the chest, would qualify as a stab wound. And why the difference really between gunshots and stab wounds? Well, it's the amount of momentum that our uh, involved, the amount of energy within both of these injuries. A gunshot wound comes at you with such velocity that uh, there's a huge amount of momentum. It is more likely to cause damage, so your pretest probability for any underlying injury is super duper high. Now, stab wounds are powered by uh, human anger, or in this case, Greco-Roman anger, and so they have a little bit less momentum, and so there may be a chance that something else, something underlying is not injured. So we have a lower threshold for things with gunshot wounds because we know that the mechanism of injury is much more severe with the gunshots. So the, or, the organs we're worried about in here again are the lungs, heart, aorta, trachea, and esophagus. So let's talk about the lungs first. A penetrating injury to the lungs is probably going to cause a pneumothorax or a hemothorax, or both. So how are you going to evaluate that? Well, a chest x-ray is pretty good at looking for those things. And so I'd probably get a chest x-ray on anybody with chest trauma, penetrating chest trauma. But we know that there could be small leaks, and uh, pneumothoraces may be difficult to see initially. And so if the initial chest x-ray is negative, I probably would wait and get one a little bit later, like six hours later. So I get a chest x-ray now and get another one in six hours. And there are other ways to look for pneumothoraces as well. You can use a CAT scan, which can find even tiny, tiny little pneumothoraces that you're going to miss on a chest x-ray. And if you know how to, you could use an ultrasound to look for uh, a pneumothorax as well. So if there is a pneumothorax, that is a poorly inflated lung, so you can see here it doesn't go all to the side, or even a hemothorax, which would be lots of blood collecting in here, then that patient would need to get a chest tube. Now let's talk about the heart. If the penetrating injury falls within our anterior box, then we know we got to worry about the heart. And it's not just if there's a wound in here. There might be one wound over here and one wound over here. Say you were stabbed by a sword. Then you know that the sword came in through here and came through here, and the path of that injury went through that anterior box. And so then you got to worry about the heart in that case. So how are you going to assess the heart? Well, probably the best way to do it is an echocardiogram. And you'll be looking really for any blood in the pericardial uh, space or any decreased filling of the heart. So if on ultrasound, you see here's the pericardium and here's the heart, and you see all this fluid uh, there in that space. And that would appear black on the ultrasound. If you see this fluid here, then you know, hey, there's blood there that shouldn't be there. And that must mean that there's a penetrating injury to the heart. So this person might need to go to the OR to to get a repair of any cardiac lacerations or even just a pericardial window where they open up a space there in the pericardium so the blood can escape. Now, any holes in the aorta are going to pretty much be rapidly fatal because, you know, you're going to exsanguinate quickly. But there's always a chance that there might be a small hole that's going to be contained in the adventitial tissue there, uh, which is a time bomb because, you know, that pressure is going to build up and eventually that person's going to bleed. So that needs to be assessed. And the best way to look for those small holes uh, is with an uh, aortogram, either a CT angio or an actual old-fashioned angiogram. And obviously, if you find something, the person's going to the OR for to get that repaired before it explodes in your face. 
And then to look at these two organs, you're obviously going to do a bronchoscopy and esophagoscopy. So obviously, if someone gets stabbed in the chest with a pencil, maybe you pissed off your math teacher instead of Neptune, then uh, are you, you might not do all of these things. Maybe a bronchoscopy, an EGD, and a CT angio is a little bit overkill. So how do you know? Well, you might get a chest x-ray, and you say, hey, if the mediastinum looks wide uh, on that chest x-ray, then I'm going to worry that this thing penetrated the mediastinum. If there's any abnormality in the mediastinum, maybe there's air in there. Uh, which is leaking out of a trachea or esophagus, then you're going to pull the trigger on doing these things. So it would really depend on the protocols that are set at the place that you work. But the main point that I want to get across here is that there are different levels of injury. Not all stab wounds are the same, and a stab wound is not the same as a gunshot wound. So a stab with a sword through the chest is obviously going to cause more damage than a pencil in the chest. However, that pencil could go deep depending on who stabbed you. And there's a lot of vital stuff in the chest that can be injured. And so have a low, low, low threshold for working these guys up. And remember, these guys are staying at least six hours, right? Because even if everything comes back, okay, we're getting that six-hour chest x-ray to make sure they don't have a pneumothorax that we're missing. And that's it for penetrating chest trauma. So let's really quickly just talk about bullets. So bullets don't fly like they do in the matrix where they go in this perfect spiral straight on. In reality there's lots of imperfections to the gun uh, barrel and so it may actually come out head over heels and it may do all kinds of weird things. There are technical ballistic terms for these but we're not going to get into that. But the question that often gets asked is when you see gunshot wounds on a patient, someone might ask, well, which one's the entrance wound and which one's the exit wound? I've heard people try to differentiate by saying the entrance wound will be smaller than the exit wound because the bullet will kind of flay out as it leaves the body, thus creating a bigger exit wound than an entrance wound. However, equally likely is that the bullet can break up into several different fragments and just a, a small piece of shrapnel leaves, and so now you have a smaller hole on the exit than you do on the entrance. So you really can't use wound size to judge whether something is an exit or an entrance. I've also heard people say that, you know, well, maybe the, the entrance wound is going to have inverted edges as the bullet kind of goes in that way, and the exit wound is going to have everted edges that so are going to be coming out. But in all honesty, it's just a bloody mess over here. You can't tell whether something is inverted or everted, so that's not a really good way to tell either. So how do you tell? What's the answer to this question? Well, the answer is who cares? Who cares? A bullet hole is a bullet hole. It doesn't matter if it's an entrance or an exit. What really matters is where it is and how many of them there are. Now, a general rule of thumb is going to be that the number of bullets plus the number of holes is going to be an even number. And that just makes logical sense, right? So this bullet enters here and exit here, then you have that bullet causing one, two holes. And so two is an even number. Now if a bullet enters here and stays in the body, then you know you're going to have one hole here and one bullet inside the body. And so a hole plus a bullet, again, is an even number. So now let's take a look at this guy over here. We have one, two, three holes. And so we know that's not an even number. So we're missing something. We're either missing one retained bullet or three retained bullets, right? So you start getting x-rays and you try to figure out where that bullet can be. So let's say you get an x-ray and you see that the bullet is here in the shoulder over there and you say, hey, that's great. That means that this bullet here has stayed outside of the anterior box here. Look at that. This wound is outside, this wound is outside, and this wound and even this bullet. So everything is outside the anterior box. And that seems logical, however, there's one problem with that. Do you know which hole this bullet came from? Did it come from here? Did it come from here? Or did it come from here? We don't know. So then you got to play connect the dots. If you have these two connected like this, then that means these two are going to be connected like this. And now look at that. This line right here went straight through the chest cavity, the anterior box. That's not good, right? Another possibility is that uh, the bullet came from this hole, in which case these two probably go together. And again, this path of bullet here again went through the anterior box. Not good. And then the final possibility would be that the bullet came from this hole, and then these two would be connected 
And again, look, this thing just nicked the top of the anterior box there. So what initially appeared to be an injury that was sparing the anterior box actually turns out to most likely have gone through it. So it is important to find all the holes, connect the dots, and also find any missing bullets so you can determine what kind of injury you have. If uh, you have a bullet path that went through the, through the belly, that went through the chest, that went through the pelvis, you need to know that because you need to work that up appropriately.